the lame duck session unfortunately continues. That's this period of time between the election and the new Congress, which comes in January the 3rd. Who knows how long it's going to last? It may go through Christmas. I have no idea. Uh, there are any number of things that they may attempt to do. We mentioned at the top of the program the National Defense Authorization Act, the annual must-pass piece of legislation. Chip Roy is running, running late, so we weren't able to get into that with him. We're going to talk about that tomorrow with uh, Florida Senator Rick Scott, so be sure and tune in for that. That is lifting the vaccine mandate in exchange for Republicans supporting NDAA. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. But for now, parents know that shielding their young children today from graphic, inappropriate content is becoming more difficult than ever. I mean, it's, it's pernicious what's online. You know, previous generations could never have imagined the forces of evil working to seduce children down a path, a dark path. And, 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 and that's what a lot of this sexual exploitation begins with. But they could have never imagined that the section of uh, the library, the children's section of public libraries, would become, in many cases, taxpayer-funded peep shows for children. Now, this is why Attorney General Jeff Landry, in my home state, has created a tip line for parents to report inappropriate books for children that are found in these public libraries. Now, parents and concerned citizens can visit a portal on the Attorney General's office uh, webpage to report materials that contain graphic sexual content that is not appropriate for young readers. Joining me now to discuss this is the Lieutenant, Lieutenant, uh, the Attorney General of the state of Louisiana, Jeff Landry. Jeff, welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me, Tony. All right, uh, tell us why you launched this initiative with this tip line for parents, why it's necessary. Well, look, we, it, there were a couple of reasons. Number one, you know, one of the uh, sections in our office is what we call the ICAT unit. It's the Internet Crimes Against Children, uh, and it is comprised of about 20 to 25 investigators uh, who work to protect children from online predators. What we've seen over the last 12 years is a 7,000-fold increase in the number of tips that come into just our office uh, for people who are preying on children uh, sexually on the Internet. And, of course, we report on a weekly basis the number of arrests that we make on these child pedophiles. That is causing me some concern as to what is it that is increasing uh, the number of these pedophiles and attacks against children, innocent children over the Internet. At the same time, we started receiving complaints from parents who are concerned about the books that they're finding in the libraries, in their public libraries, that are accessible to children. And, you know, Tony, anyone who has followed uh, our uh, time at the Attorney General's office in Louisiana knows that we have stood up again and again. We stood up for students in explaining what their religious rights uh, as when they go to public schools. We've stood up to educate parents and students uh, when the government was infringing upon their rights when it came to vaccine mandates during the pandemic. This is another way under which we want to educate parents that they have some parental rights, uh, that, that they have ways to go out and basically give their grievance to their elected officials and ensure that there are policies in their libraries that protects their children. I mean, you're not the only one that made this argument, so you're not alone in this. In fact, I just had uh, Attorney General Jay Ashcroft on from Missouri, and I didn't get into it with him because we were talking about something else, but he's, he's had, he has a very similar project going on in the state of Missouri. It, the, the sexual content that kids are being exposed to today, especially in places that are supposed to be, I mean, if you get something out of a school library or public library, you, you think, well, it's, it's, I mean, the library's not going to give me anything that's bad. And so there's this expectation in the minds of children that if you get it from a teacher, you get it from a librarian, you get it out of the public library, it's going to be okay. But in fact, these are breaking the, the, the material that we're seeing. And I've seen some reports uh, that show just how... Uh, I mean, this stuff is obscene. This is breaking down the inhibitions that children have about sexual topics. And this is allowing what, again, you're not the only one arguing this, others have. This leads to grooming. 
And this is why we may be seeing that increase in the, ex uh, the sexual exploitation of children. You're exactly right. And as part of the presentation that we gave to over 300 people in St. Tammany Parish in Louisiana, as you know, we don't have counties, we have parishes. Uh, and we had we held kind of a town hall meeting under which we kind of walked them through the sexualization and grooming of children, because certainly we don't want children to fall victim to this type of sexualization and assault. You know, but I'm waiting for someone to tell me how these books belong right next to Dr. Seuss. Right. Why these books belong on the children's section of the library. I, I don't think anyone, any sane person who has raised children, uh, is certainly in an environment that we want, um, that we know, not that we want, but that we know is conducive for positive growth, can tell me that these books belong inside of the children's section of a library. Uh, and so we want to be able to in, in, educate parents that they have some parental rights and that their voices can be heard and that we can put in place positive policy that both, you know, that both protects First Amendment rights of books that are actually in the library already uh, in, from, from getting into the hands of children. And so that's what we're trying to do. Well, I, I, I do say you do have some detractors. Um, the American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU in Louisiana, criticized you, saying that, uh, quote, and I quote from them, uh, children are not being exposed to obscene content in libraries, and it's troubling that anyone would suggest that LGBTQ-related content is any way harmful to children. I mean, that's the type of graph. I mean, parents need to see, and many of them have, and that's why they're speaking out, and that's why they've contacted you, is because this material is graphic, it is obscene, and it is not appropriate for five- and six-year-olds to be looking at all this issue of human sexuality. Well, you know, interestingly enough, why don't we ask the ACLU to publish those books on their website and let parents around the country determine whether or not those books are offensive Bingo. to them? Why don't they do that? You well, know, since they are the American Civil Liberties let's Union, see, let, let's, then see let's if they'll have take them you up publish on that. those books on their website and then make that available to everyone on the open web. No, they want to hide it. They want to hide it in the library so just the kids get to it. But you are pulling back the curtain, curtain and allowing parents to speak out. So uh, before we run out of time, how can parents contact you and let you know what they see or what they're concerned about? They can go to our website at agjefflandry.com. There they'll find the link that puts them to uh, the portal uh, that allows them to fill out some information and then to discuss the issues that, that are concerning them regarding these books. What are the next steps for your office as you collect this information? As we collect this, this information, we're also doing simultaneously, we're doing a deep dive into the legal framework here in Louisiana so that we can offer uh, the, our legislators and parents uh, the options to what they can do to put in place policies that are going to protect children. All right. Well, we want to help you with that, and uh, we'll make sure we get this information out. And, and as this information comes in, maybe we can do another uh, town hall meeting, because this is an issue that we're seeing across the nation. Uh, but we need leaders uh, like you who are willing to step forward and say, you know what, everybody's talking about it, but I'm going to do something about it. So we look forward to following up with you on this. Thank you.